Hey, I'm Doug, the Director of Education for St. Joseph's Catholic Church, and today I want to talk to you about the problem of evil. When St. Thomas Aquinas wrote the Summa Theologiae, he typically gave at least three objections to every position that he held and found to be true. But when it came to the existence of God, he only listed two potential objections. One of them was that many things often attributed to God could be explained scientifically, and the other one was the problem of evil. Now, the first objection that Aquinas lists isn't really an argument against God's existence. It's more like an argument against arguments for God's existence based on science. But the second objection, the argument from the problem of evil, is actually a direct attack on the existence of God. The problem of evil is so important that Aquinas went on to write another book on just that topic alone that's over 550 pages long. Now, we are obviously not going to have time to go over all of this today, but I do want to give you a robust answer to the problem of evil, because it is a problem that has plagued mankind since before Christianity even came into existence. And it is worth going deep on this one to make sure that we are ready when the problem of evil arises, either from the outside when somebody uses it to attack belief in God, or internally from the inside when maybe we have to face evil and deal with its consequences for our faith. Let's get started. So as is hopefully clear by now, the problem of evil is a very serious issue. It has led untold numbers of people to either give up faith in God or not have faith in God to begin with. And the problem of evil is not helped by the fact that too many Christians have glib, kind of bumper sticker answers or responses to evil suffered. So hopefully we will deal with both of those issues in this video. All right, many of you have probably heard the Chris Tomlin song, Good, Good Father. In the song, we are singing to God the Father, and we are singing lyrics such as this. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. And I am loved by you. It's who I am. Because you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Now, the difficulty that we sometimes face is that when we think of what makes a good father, we typically think in human terms, because that's all the fathers we know. We all have some kind of idea of a standard of what would make a father good. For example, a father is someone who would protect his children from injury or harm, right? If you saw a dad walking down the sidewalk with his son and the father shoved the kid out into the street, we wouldn't think he was a good father. We also wouldn't think he was a good father if his child started to fall into the street and the dad could easily rescue the kid from falling down in front of the oncoming car, but just decided not to. And as we start to think through these things, it becomes apparent that there's a big difficulty squaring the God of Christianity with the world that we live in. And that's because when we look around the world, we see things like huge natural disasters. We see suffering and death and devastation, and we suffer from the ideas of truly horrid world leaders. Now, if the God of Christianity exists, if he's the kind of God that we believe in, it seems like he could just stop any one of these things anytime he wanted to, and yet he doesn't. And that, in a summary, is the problem of evil. Now, the problem of evil goes back to before Christianity even started. In the third century BC, a philosopher by the name of Epicurus put it this way, is God willing to prevent evil but not able? Then he is not omnipotent, that is, all-powerful. Is he able but not willing? Then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? Then whence cometh evil? Is he neither able nor willing? Then why call him God? And the problem of evil is not something that just affects the common, everyday churchgoer. I know of at least two top-level anti-Christian scholars who both gave up their faith in Christianity because of the problem of evil. One of them is Bart Ehrman, author of numerous books going after Christianity and attacking it. And he explains why. He says, the very heart of the Christian claim is that God loves his people, answers their prayers, and intervenes when they are in need. I came to think there was no such God and decided that I had no choice but to abandon my faith 
and leave the Christian tradition. Another important skeptic by the name of Michael Shermer, in fact, the editor of Skeptic Magazine, lost his faith when he was in college when his then-girlfriend got in a car accident. He explains it like this. My college sweetheart, whom I met at Pepperdine, a woman named Maureen, was in a horrific automobile accident that broke her back and rendered her paralyzed from the waist down. If there was any justice in the universe, any at all, this sweet, loving, smart, responsible, devoted, caring spirit did not deserve to be in a shattered body. A just and loving God who had the power to heal would surely heal Maureen. He didn't. He didn't, I now believe, not because God works in mysterious ways or he has a special plan for Maureen, but because there is no God. And this is one of the reasons why the problem of evil is so important. This isn't just an apologetic task. This isn't just a way to convince people God exists despite all the evil that we see around us in the world. If we aren't prepared going into the evil that we are actually promised we will face, it can destroy our own faith as well. Now, we're going to be looking at the problem of evil from three different angles. The metaphysical, that is based on creation. The logical, which looks at whether or not it even makes sense that a god like the Christians believe in and his creation could exist at the same time. And then the emotional, which, as we will see, has to be dealt with in a very different way. Now, each one of these approaches is important. Each one of them is legitimate. But even more important is to realize that we don't want to offer the answers to one form of the problem of evil when we are really dealing with issues arising from another version of the problem of evil. So, for example, if somebody is suffering and is charging God with the evil of the world or doubting that he even exists, that is not the time to throw down a metaphysical argument or try to show them logically how it's incoherent to think that that is a necessary truth. That's when it's time for a hug and some understanding. But eventually, the intellect is going to have to be convinced or else the heart isn't going to move. So first things first, let's look at the metaphysical argument. And that sounds really fancy and scary perhaps, but basically all it says is that if God created everything and evil is real, then it seems like God created evil and therefore it's his fault. Now this seems to make sense, right? I mean, as Christians, we believe that evil is real. We, we don't deny that evil exists like some Eastern religions or New Age stuff. No, evil is real. There really is disease. There really is death. There really is suffering. Things really aren't the way they should be. So the Christian doesn't start off by denying that evil exists or just saying that it's all in our head. No, we accept the reality of evil. We also believe that everything in creation, that is everything besides God, was created by God. So how do we put those two truths together? Well, the way we do it is to understand what evil really is. Evil isn't a thing with its own existence. Rather, it's the lack of goodness in a thing that has its own existence. To give a simple example, think about the hole in the middle of a donut. What a baker creates is dough in the shape of a circle. Where there is no dough, we call that a hole. But really, it's just the absence of dough. The hole doesn't have its own existence. You can't take that hole out and put it in a jar. That's why calling little blobs of dough donut holes is funny. So the hole in a donut is real. It's not an illusion, but it isn't a thing that exists. It's just what we call the missing part of another thing. And the same thing if you dig a hole in the ground. If I go out to my lawn and I dig a bunch of dirt out and create a hole, there is a sense in which I've made a hole, but really all I've done is moved dirt. And now the place where there is no dirt, we just happen to call that nothingness with a name, namely a hole. Everything that God made is a thing that exists, but God didn't create the nothingness that results when something is missing from something that is created. So for example, if moths eat holes into a shirt, it's not that the moths have created something that didn't used to exist. Rather, they've gotten rid of something that used to exist. So while it is true in a sense that we can say moths created holes in the shirt, upon a little bit of reflection, we realize they didn't actually create anything. 
They simply moved stuff that had already been created, leaving behind a spot where nothing was. Now, evil is not just missing stuff. Obviously, there's lots of missing stuff in the world. But rather, evil is what we call a privation. A privation is when something is missing, but it shouldn't. So, for example, the hole in a donut is not a privation of the donut. That hole is there because of what a donut is. However, holes in the material of a shirt eaten by moths are privations because that's nothingness that shouldn't be there. And so what we say about evil is that it is always a lack of goodness. There, there's always good because evil wouldn't even exist without good, just like darkness isn't a thing. Light is a thing. And when you take all the light away and there's nothing left behind, we just call that dark. But darkness isn't a substance. You can't really collect darkness and put it in a bag. And in the same way, evil is always a lack of goodness. It's always something that should be there but isn't. Or it's a relationship between two things that is wrong. So if I take a perfectly good knife and my perfectly good arm and they come into a bad relationship with each other, evil can result. But it's not like there's any thing called evil that suddenly pops into existence. So rather than saying God creates evil, what we should say is that he allows evil. So if I open my closet and I see a bunch of moths in there chewing on my shirt, if I allow them to eat holes in the material, I haven't created holes. I've simply allowed the moths and the shirt to come into a relationship with each other such that holes are the result. So the real question becomes, is there any good reason for God to allow evil? Consider in scripture the man born blind. Jesus says that God allows that because great good came out of it. People believed in Jesus. The man came to salvation. He's going to spend an infinite amount of time in pure, unadulterated, infinite bliss beholding the vision of God forever. And the years that he spent blind that led up to that are barely even going to be worth remembering. When St. John Paul II got shot by the man who tried to kill him, that man later repented. That's something he might have never done if the shot hadn't been fired. Now, that doesn't mean that blindness is a good thing. It doesn't mean that trying to assassinate somebody is a good thing or that being shot is a good thing. But what it means is that the entirety of this situation can be used for good, even if there is evil involved in the situation. But for now, the important thing simply to note is that evil is not a thing. And so while God may allow evil, he didn't create it. And so when we see evil in the world, we're not really pointing at a created thing and saying that's God's fault. Now that's just one piece of the puzzle. And to be honest, it's probably the least interesting, but it is one that we need to tackle because a lot of people get confused about the idea that God created all things and therefore all things are attributable straight back to God. And this becomes more and more important as we go along. So next time we're gonna take a look at the logical argument for the problem of evil. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, give it a like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can find out when new videos drop. You do that by clicking the subscribe bell when it pops up. Until next time, I'm Doug. This is St. Joseph's Catholic Church. Thank you.